five, six years ago when I did um, when I did the pillars of the earth, and and they helped me a lot with understanding the 15th century Italy in many ways. You know, probably had I not had that sort of historical preparation five years earlier, I wouldn't know already so much when I jumped into doing Medici. I I liked doing Medici because they were so different from the, the pillars. You know, pillars obviously was a fictitious story based on Ken Follett's books and it had a huge audience and in some way it was about pleasing, it was about sort of recreating the novels, the novel on screen for the audience so that they can start meeting the characters that they already knew from the books. Here was a completely different situation where, where we have an, you know, an original script by, um, by Frank uh, portraying characters from an era that is very well known in Italy, but probably not so well known in the world. So in some way, uh, for the Italian audience, it was about recreating people that they've been learning and hearing about all their life. And for the international audience, it's sort of recreating a time uh, of great interest for uh, other cultures, but, but sort of putting a face to a history that they've only seen through um, architecture and paintings um, and art of the time, but have never really seen the, the, the actual actors of uh, that history. So in some way, um, giving it a human, um, human drama, giving the human drama behind all this art, that I think was the, the interesting part. Thank you. Why not Lorenzo in Magnifico, who is the most famous? Because when I saw Medici, not knowing anything, I thought about Lorenzo. Yes. But then I saw Cosimo, and I asked myself, why Cosimo, yes. not Lorenzo? Well, it's a good question. We considered starting with Lorenzo the Magnificent, but we knew we wanted to do a story about the Medici family, and it felt wrong to skip past the beginnings of the Medici family. And so we looked at Giovanni's life, and we looked at Cosimo's life, we looked at Piero's life, and ultimately we settled on this idea of beginning with the moment when Cosimo must take over from his father, because that would allow us to talk about the beginnings of the bank, largely in flashbacks to Giovanni, which you'll see in future episodes, because Dustin Hoffman continues in flashback beyond the first episode, but um, also talk about what the Medici family changed because this is when the Medici family is changing Florence. You know, by the time you get to Lorenzo Magnificent, you're in the high Renaissance. They've already done a lot to change the course of history. And so, you know, seeing him, seeing Donatello and the David, seeing the dome being completed, those just felt like irresistible stories that we had to tell. And, and actually now we're working on season two, and that will be Lorenzo the Magnificent. So we get both this way. I think it's also really good that you told the story about the beginning of the Renaissance, Frank, because mm -hmm. because people usually get the Renaissance from the back end. Essentially, right. they just see the finished product. Yes. But they don't see how people actually struggle to make it happen. Yes. And one thing we talked a lot about was, you know, in the first episode, Cosimo goes to Rome and rediscovering the wisdom of the ancient Romans, which had been buried in the mud for a thousand years, you know, and stripped. And through the character of Donatello, you know, he starts to rediscover and bring back the lessons that people had learned and forgotten, you know, over a thousand years before. And and we tie in the love story with the Bianca character played by Miriam Leone into that journey about beauty versus commerce versus the bank. And then you see in future episodes how he uses the bank to champion beauty. You know, because his his desire for his own life is thwarted by his father. And, and that's what it takes to build a great family and to change civilization. The, G, the dreams that Giovanni had were too big to be realized by one generation. So he needed Cosimo to sacrifice to, to help build the dreams that he had. And Cosimo does, but when he gets his turn, when he's in charge of the bank, he marshals the resources of the bank for art, for, for, for the dome principally, but for other things as well. And so this was a way to, as Sergio said, to tell the story of the beginnings of the Renaissance and how that happened. 
you know, the, the other thing that's interesting to me that's in the first episode is the idea that it was blasphemous. It was considered vulgar, the art that they were championing. Painting was considered vulgar. But as Donatello says in the first episode, if we're created in the image of God, then if we celebrate the beauty of the human form, we're celebrating God. Right? These are, these are ideas that we take for granted now, but they were new at the time when Cosimo lived. And as you said, it takes generations to build the Renaissance. Yes. You said it earlier. Um, it, and that's fantastic is that, the, you know, Cosimo needed to lay down the foundation, which was financial and creative, but then Lorenzo then took it onto another dimension. Yes. By the, by the time Lorenzo the Magnificent comes along, there's lots of people buying art. There's lots of people interested in the art that Cosimo was, you know, was helping to define in his generation. So we would have missed all of that if we'd started later. How about the flashback? Why did you choose this way to tell a story? It's a very challenging yeah, uh, structure. Exactly. It's really tough to pull off. Yes, <laughs> um, and, and it requires the actors to play the same characters, you know, 20 years apart, which yes. is also interesting. Um, but what it did was it allowed us to immediately engage the audience. Mm. Uh, that drives the story forward, right, and keeps you watching. And then in order to understand Cosimo's journey, you need to flash back to the past. And I think that was, that was and, you know, uh, Sergio worked very hard with us on the scripts, and that was always the challenge, was to make the flashbacks urgent. Like, the drama isn't stopping to flash back. No, I need to understand this so I can keep going forward, um, which I think we, yeah. we tried to do. I think it also draws you into understanding the care and following the story. It sort of, the story sort of sucks you in to, to trying to work with the story. You know, not everything is clear quite at the beginning. You don't quite, but, but, but I think just to trying to kind of, to, to understand the relationships, who is who and how do these people relate to one each other in the past and then what the relationships have changed 20 years later. I think that's the, that's sort of, puts the audience in an active position. Yes, and we were really determined to try and make their psychology modern. Like, okay, I recognize people like that. I recognize Cosimo as, as you know, he's a son whose father was difficult, whose father didn't approve of what he wanted to do. So even though they lived 600 years ago, I can relate to these characters and I, it's, it's, it's accessible to me. The aspect, um, one of the interesting aspects is the human factor that uh, every character from Medici to the humblest man um, is conflicted between the man that he wants to be and the man or the woman that he has to be. Yes. This was uh, an interesting point of view for yeah, you. Yeah. I, I think to me, absolutely that's the single most moving thing about the story. And there's many things about the story that move me, but the idea of sacrifice that there are ideas that are worth um, sacrificing your life for. And I think, you know, Cosimo represents that in the story. He gave up so much to help build the world we all live in today. And we were eager to show that sacrifice. I mean, you see it in the first episode when he sacrifices the love of his life. Um, and and it, he, he submits to his father's will that he will leave the bank. Um, but. You know, he, he, he does that and much more. He commits sins that he really believes are sins and that he will pay for with his immortal soul to create the world that we all see now. And th that's what the story we wanted to tell. And that's how we sort of shaped history and picked moments from history and adapted things to sort of highlight that human emotional truth in the Medici saga. Yeah. Um, 